G'day and welcome to the Kotaku Australia podcast. My name is David. I'm the managing editor at Kotaku Australia. Uh, Hey, we were off last week. We didn't see you guys. We missed you guys. We're happy to be back. We're happy to be chit-chatting about games again. Uh, a little bit different this week. We're going to be talking about some other stuff like anime. I know you guys are into that. Uh, so we want to do like a whole episode dedicated just to that. Uh, joining me as always, uh, our multimedia reporter, Emily Spindler. She's back. She was gone last week, but she's back. Mate, how you doing? I'm good. I just had to run off to the forest to be a little bog witch for a hot second. But I, I feel mean, it like- happens, you know. It happens to the best of us. So <laughs> I've, ha- I've had my time communing with the rocks and the trees, and I'm, I'm back now. So yeah, happy to be talking Welcome about back. anime. Welcome back. We are indeed going to be talking about anime with Kotaku Australia's resident senior anime reporter, Courtney Borrett. Courtney, how you doing, mate? I'm good, thank you. I was actually just hanging out with Naruto and he wanted to say hi to you guys too. Oh my so, God. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. Did you know, I actually tell all of the people that ask me where I live that I live in the Hidden Leaf Village. <laughs> it's true though, you do. It is. That's on, your, yeah, like, it's on your driver's license actually. It is. <laughs> I, have, I have the sticker on the back. Oh man, I gotta oh, get me one yeah. of those. That's true. That's true. It'd be actually really good if I could get one of those. That'd be actually pretty sick. That's our um, project. All right, cool. That's our project. That is actually, you know what? I'm going to not legally binding Vic Rhodes. If you hear this, don't listen. Um, but yeah, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check that out see how easy it would be to do that. So this episode is going to be about anime. But before we do that, we'll jump in really quickly into what we've been playing as we always do. Uh, I'm fairly certain I know what the answer is going to be across the board here. Um, I mean, I've been playing a whole bunch of Baldur's Gate. Emily, what have you been doing? Baldur's Gate? Yes, literally only Baldur's Gate. It has consumed my entire life. And at some <laughs> point, I forgot that I was a human that had to eat and stand up. But you know what? My my party was very well rested and well looked after, even if I wasn't. So, you know, doing real, real well. I Got to be taking those long rests. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I got to romance Shadowheart finally. I believe that I was popping off the other week about how in early access she spurned me every single time I tried, but I've done it now. We've gotten there. Um, so, yeah, you know, just been Baldi's Gaten, as Baldi's I Gaten. like to say, because I kept saying the name wrong and now that's what my <laughs> brain tells me it's called. And now that's what we call it. Yeah. Uh, Have you been Boulder and Gaten as well? I sure have. Um, what was your character class again? What were you playing? I was playing a bard. You were playing a bard. Okay. Yeah. I I started. Um, I started as a cleric, and then I restarted as a sork. Um, my understanding is that the paladin is the most popular. People seem to be picking the paladin a lot, which surprises me. Apparently, people just like a sword and board kind of guy. Um, See, I find that really interesting because I feel like from my experience playing like IRL D&D, or at least with my friends, no one ever picks Paladin. Not because they don't like it. It just like never Mm. seems to come up. Everyone wants to be an edgy boy and it's just not edgy enough for them. No, that's what I did. I became a sorcerer uh, and that seems to have served me well. I just get to stand back and blow everybody away with Eldritch Blast. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Uh, Yeah, it has been my life for a couple of weeks now, uh, which... But we were saying before we started recording the show, like, I, I can't believe the extent to which Baldur's Gate 3 has captured the sort of public imagination. Like, I did not expect, I expected it to be big. I did not expect it to be this big, like, taking over, like, top review spots from Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom for the year. Um, like, the amount of people who are playing it, the amount of, like, support that Larian have received for this game blows me away for a series that has been dormant for as long as it has for it to come back like this is beyond anything I kind of expected of it Um, it's absolutely wild and when you consider that like you know it's it's literally only just on PC right now like it's not not even yet like come to PlayStation so there's all like these other players that have not yet managed to get their little mitts on it like I don't know it's 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 cool. It's very very cool. Like I love it because I'm like, oh yeah, get more people into D and D vibes. But you know, yeah, I, I, I confess I have already it. smashed the pre order button on PS Five. I want <laughs> I, I want the well. version I can play on the couch. Oh, yeah, same. That was my thought too. Now, Courtney, 
have you been playing Baldur's Gate or have you been playing other games because you haven't been sucked into it like we have? Okay, I have not been playing Baldur's Gate, but all of my friends and family have and they don't stop talking about it. So I know a little bit, like I know that like there's the fire lady and everyone wants to bang her, but she's like too hot and she's like, I have to be cooled down before you touch me. Like that's all I know. I've been playing League of Legends. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry David. I really want to hear about League of Legends, but I also low-key now want the entire game recapped by Courtney, just in that exact style, I think. All, all of Boulder's There's games. There's a TikTok in that. <laughs> yeah. Just Courtney's A-bridged walkthrough of Boulder's Gate. Anyway, sorry, continue <laughs> the League of Legends recap. I do actually yeah. want to hear about this too. I've, okay, I've been playing ranked League of Legends and it's a pit of gremlins everyone is the worst (laughs) um i every day i get home from work and i do my my allotted time in prison which is league of legends and then after that i can i can be freed to do other things like watch anime or play candy crush on my phone (laughs) that's what i've been doing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god straight into league of legends jail it's Ugh. like i have it's so like, i have multiple people now trying to get me into this game my brain physically Look. cannot stop me i must it's a compulsion <laughs> <laughs> league poisoned just fully league pilled it's fine but yeah. it happens yeah. it happens to the best of us And I let myself into the jail cell too. Like, I'm opening the door. Like, all right, guys, let's go. You are your own jailer. Just going to clock in for my prison shift. It's fine. (laughs) Yep. In the salt mines. Look, I'm not far off just going full sweaty and jumping into league myself. I'm already already in Valorant prison, so, you know, I'm, I'm only a hop, skip, and a jump away. Just play with me. Okay, we'll play together. Okay, then we can just be toxic on League of Legends together. <laughs> the pleading tone of that, please play with me, please, please. God. I can't do it. I'll do I it. I can't I'll go by it. myself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'll play Very with good. you. I'll play Very with good. you. Very good. All right. All right. Moving on to something a little less painful than <laughs> League of Legends jail. Let's talk about anime. Uh, so... This is going to be a conversation that's more or less driven by Emily and Courtney on this one because I am a long time lapsed weeb. Uh, I have not watched a lot of anime uh, in probably about 10 or 15 years. I, I check in every now and again. I pick up the occasional show, but it's not something I follow very closely. So I am basically the person that this podcast is for. I'm the person that's going to be hearing about shows for the first time and stuff I'm being recommended to watch. Uh, so this is going to be very exciting for me. Uh, where do we want to start? I reckon maybe it would be good to start with the real cool new shows that have come out super recently because they're always the fun ones that are front of mind to info dump about. Um, Courtney, have there been any new shows that have come out in, say, like the last month or two that have really caught your attention that you reckon are worth others giving a watch? Yes. So this season... uh of anime kind of crept up on us um there were a lot of sequels to things like Jujutsu Kaisen uh Mm. Bleach uh Jobless Reincarnation shows like that where it's all second or third season and we knew they were going to be popular but what has come out that hasn't been a sequel has really shocked us so Zom 100 is the first one I want to talk about um if you haven't heard about it it's currently um, airing on Netflix and Crunchyroll. It's getting a lot. Li- it already has a live action adaptation. It's so popular. It's about a guy. He's working his corporate job and he hates it. He's doing overtime every day. And all of a sudden the zombie apocalypse hits and he's like, oh shit, I don't have to go to work anymore this is so good and he's like my life begins today and like there's just zombies crawling everywhere and that's the premise and it's so so relatable 
It's like, so the apocalypse blue. is here. I, I fucking day off. Hell yes. Oh, yeah. I Look, I'm not sure I would quite be in the same boat as him if the zombie apocalypse happened, but I'd like to think that I could be. Like, as long as the internet was still working. Good. Yeah. I'm good. I, do you think it's like... I, go for it. Uh, can I ask, if you were in the zombie apocalypse, how long do you think you would last? Not very. I'm... A little baby that needs to have at least three to five treats a day or the demons will get me so <laughs> I, th- I think that I think that I would not last very very long at all <laughs> what about you two David I- I'm lasting like 15 minutes I am not fast <laughs> I, I'm kind of, I'm with you guys I feel like I would just start crying and I wouldn't be able to stop crying and I would be very upset and all of my friends would just leave me behind. They'll be like, oh my God, she's so annoying. Like they would put some anime on, on a TV and be like, sit in this room. We might come back in a month. Yeah, basically it would not be good for me. And I think I prefer that, honestly. (laughs) Honestly, that's fair. I think even if I did have fantastic survival instincts, which I definitely don't, I just can't shut up, and I think that in a survival group, it would get real old real quick. <laughs> the guy, the main character in the show, that's him. He does not shut up. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the shops and get some beer, beer. And he's like riding his bike and like singing a song about beer. And I'm like, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, please. I just like he to live so my dream. This guy. God, I'm like looking, I'm looking at a photo of the live action adaptation now and I'm very keen for this. I also love how colourful all of the art is. I don't know if it's like that in the actual show as well, but it makes my brain happy. Yeah, I think they, I think because it's such a reflection of like, you know, capitalist society, right? So it's like, even though there's all this blood everywhere, it's, it looks like paintball splatters because it's like, we're free finally from the clutches of <laughs> the money monster which is kind of nice it is kind of wholesome it's a lot more of a wholesome concept than the new ish show i was gonna pop off about i mean kind of i guess so i was gonna talk about well it's kind of new if you count the remainder of the season coming out so i'm going to because i want to talk about it uh so mobile suit gundam the witch from mercury i've already popped off about it on the website because i have a lot of opinions about it have you seen it courtney i have not but i have heard so much about it and i need to watch it you absolutely do For those playing at home who aren't across the concept, and also, excuse me if I haven't got all of the law fully correct, this is my first Gundam anime. Baby's first Gundam anime, and it was very good. Um, Yeah, basically, Gundam world, there is space and Earth, and the Spatians and the Earthians, as they're so called, don't really get along that well. Anyway, um, they ban Gundams because they're killing all the pilots and making the pilots go go crazy and stuff like that and uh then a girl called Suleta comes to a school to learn how to be a mech pilot but uh she secretly is very very good at it and it's like why is she so good at it and I'm not gonna spoil it I almost did but anyway she meets another girl (laughs) called Murine who um (laughs) is also very very cool and they end up betrothed like immediately that's not a spoiler because that happens in the first episode and this is what I popped off about on the Kotaku website because I was like They are in love. Um, And basically, it's just all of the twists and turns in this story of, like, their friendship, the friendships with all of the other people that go to the school, all this political intrigue with, like, people who are making mechs and maybe Gundams. Who knows? Space politics. It's very, very good. It is literally heartbreaking to watch. I was not expecting it. Um, And I wasn't expecting to enjoy the like fight scenes between the like piloted mechs as much as I did because I like I like action but I don't know usually I'm like "Eh, it's okay but um yeah look it was fantastic it was also really cool to see like a 
like mainland Gundam anime with like gals to the front. I don't know. Personally, for me, that was cool. Um, and yeah, I don't know. The storyline was just very fantastic. And I also thought the art style was beautiful and the way they did do the action scenes was fantastic. And also during some of the fights, there was a specific sound effect that Saletta's mech makes when it blocks things that just tickles my brain real good. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I was like, but yes. So I definitely recommend it. Um, however, it does get a bit like heavy, like it's a lot. I don't know. It's if you're into that kind of thing, it's fantastic. If you're more into like a lighthearted, like slice of life, it does have portions of that, but um, not too much. <laughs> I feel like Gundam fans know what they're getting into, right? When they start a series like this, like that Gundam has always dealt with heady, like socio-political issues like this. It's always put them on front street where the people just want to be like, wow, it's stompy bots. It's like Gundam has always had a lot more on its mind than people sort of give it credit for, uh, particularly the really old stuff. Like I've, I've watched the old like Gundam one and two and like, it's so like, it's dealing with such big ideas. I feel like it's really rare for mech anime to not, like, I feel like it's really rare to get a mech anime that is just, like, robots smashing into each other um, mm-hmm. because yeah. usually it is in, like, a future, right, where the world's gone to shit and the only way we can live is by flying robots, you know? So, like, even Evangelion, yeah. uh, I would even say... Um, not so much that it's a mech anime, but like a Neo Automata where it's like androids and robots, like, you know, we're dealing with that because there's no world where there's flying robots and we're happy. Yeah. I wish there yeah. was, but unfortunately not. That's, that's true. I would love nothing more than my own Stompy bot. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of it A lot of it feels like, you know, there was an era of, of mech anime in like the 80s and the 90s that was built like Pat Labor and stuff like that, that felt like like Japan kind of, I don't know, grappling with its own like history of militarization and yeah. how that's like by turns made them incredibly powerful and backfired on them at the same time uh, over and over again throughout history. It's just, it's such an interesting relationship with this in, like, and technology as well, right? Like Japan's own relationship with technology, how is it helping us? What are we doing with it? Like, where is it taking us? There's, they're, they're always unpacking their own relationship with the world around them and they're doing it through these giant robots in this really abstract way. It's always it's always tickled me. That, those sorts of shows have always appealed. But then again, you know, like, you know, I, I was watching anime as like a teenage boy in the 2000s. Of course, giant robots appealed to me. <laughs> well, like, I feel like it, in a similar vein, it's kind of how like anything with like cyberpunk type themes, I think just most of the time handles that kind of looking at the future and like how do we deal with the increase in technology and where does that take us and how do we balance humanity with like futurism i think that it's just a really really interesting topic to explore no matter what angle you take it but i do like when it is really abstracted i think it kind of gives you a bit more freedom to play within the story which i think is very cool speaking of abstract anime Uh, There is one Mm -hmm. other from this season that everyone else hates, but I think is fantastic. Uh, It's called Mm -hmm. The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today. Um, The Japanese name is Dikineko. Tell us about this show and then I've got a question for you. Okay. So this is about a woman who she's single. She like works like an office job. Um, and she's a slob. She is an absolute gremlin. She doesn't know how to take care of herself. And one day she decides to pick up a stray cat on the side of the road. Um, the cat turns out to not stop growing and becomes really big, even taller than her. And it can cook and clean. It can't talk, but it, uh, is very, very human. Um, and it's basically her living with her uh housekeeper cat i need what? to this up. i want to see what's it called the masterful cat is depressed again today yep um okay and the the best part is the, the studio is go hands and they are known for their really weird cgi so they've 
animated it like it's a weird horror film, but it's <laughs> a slice of life. It's really strange and I love it. I've just looked it up and that is, it's so cursed. I, I think it's, I need to watch this. It's, I love this show and other anime fans are like, oh my God, it's so bad. Don't, don't watch this show. And I'm like, everyone watch this show now. How do you even sell a pitch like that? Like, how do you convince a studio to buy that and produce it? Go hands are cooked. Go hands are so if you know any of their other works, their biggest one was K Project, which came out like ten years ago and it was like really beautiful looking uh CGI and was about these like uh kind of mini gangs, but it was like magic. It was like a red king and a blue king and it was like really urban uh kind of like gang style. Mm-hmm. And it was quite quite good. So when I saw they were doing this one, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But for some reason, everything's just weirdly dark and, like, too clean. And I'm like, what's happening? Go hands. Who who made you do this? Who hurt you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it so much, though. I think, like, I always like when I'm scrolling through like an anime site and you kind of get the ones that do have these really long cursed names and it's like honestly it's a lucky dip of what I'm even going to be watching at this point and I'm just so so ready to be taken on this ride yeah (laughs) I think um another one that I really liked that I think is probably a bit hit and miss for some people just because it's like a bit of a slow goer is um the fire hunter I have you seen this one? I have. Please continue. Do you not like it? Do you I not like it? I didn't like it. It just didn't make much sense. I was really I wanted to get into it because I love the art style. I was like, this art yes. style is so cool. I really I really want to get into it, but it was just like I was falling asleep. Oh no. Well, I guess it's not for everyone, but I really, really liked it. I think um, my brain is nonlinear as well, so maybe, like, the lack of making sense, like, somehow worked. I'm sure. But I think what really did capture me was that, like, beautiful art style. Usually I, like, don't pick, like, anime that I'm going to watch based on art style because, like, it's deceiving. Looks can be deceiving. But I don't know. It just, like... I don't even know how to describe it. It gave me, like, almost nostalgic vibes. I don't know how to describe it any other way, but I just think it's neat. I'm still watching it. I haven't completed it, but it's very good. Well, for me, it was very good. Viewers, you're going to have to watch it and make up your own mind, I think, because we've got a split jury on this one. It's very pretty. Tell them what you think. It's it's so, so pretty. But Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that I've been watching lately. I mean, like, obviously, like new season of Jujutsu Kaisen, which has been fantastic. Do you have any thoughts on it? Either you, it's, Courtney, or David? It started off so slow and I was mm. a bit worried. I was worried and then every episode it ramped up and ramped up and then by the end of this like kind of mini arc, I was like, oh, my God, what is happening? Like it's been five episodes and I'm like, more, more. stressful well that was the thing that I found because I was like ah I feel like the first season like really got there super quickly like so when it just kind of was like oh and they're in this haunted house what are they doing I was like you better not it better not be like second season curse where it just falls off and Mm -hmm. like they like changed the art style a bit and I was like well I like the more kind of like fluid art style anyway but I was like what is going to happen but no it's it's been fantastic so far you should also watch it david if you haven't i've been told i should i should be checking this one out by a few people now so i've obviously got to put that one on my list um uh, yeah it definitely seems like the sort of thing to be up my alley 100%. yeah the art beautiful the characters fantastic go now actually just go bye <laughs> Yeah, go watch it. Oh, cool. yeah, right, actually, the rest of this podcast is going to be us staring at David while he stares at his screen watching Jujutsu Kaisen, and we just watch him live react. Live David reaction. 
Yeah, I think that would be very fun and cool for people listening that can't actually see David's screen. Yeah, this is me, like, eating popcorn. But, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> oh, gosh. There's been, like, a lot of fantastic new shows that have come out lately. Like you were saying, Courtney, like, a lot of kind of sequel seasons, which has been fantastic because there are so many that I've been waiting for seven million years for. Um but I think, like, as much as there's all these fantastic new shows and new seasons coming out, there's a lot of kind of older, if you even want to count some of them as older, some of them aren't even a year old, a lot of older shows that are, I think, great to kind of jump into if you're perhaps not a massive anime fan, whether that's because you haven't watched it for a super long time, like David, or whether you just never got into it, or whether you're just fussy. I think... um. Yeah, I, I would love to know if there's any that you think are, like, fantastic kind of, like, entry-level shows that aren't 700 episodes long because I know that could be very, very daunting <laughs> to start. Yes. Um, my recent uh, addition to my recommendations for new anime fans list is Haikyuu. Um, oh, is this Haikyuu? The, the, the volleyball one? Yeah, yeah, the volleyball one. It. It sounds so simple and it seems so, you know, oh, I don't like sports, I don't like sports anime, but the story and the way that they build up the tension of the games and the relationships between the characters feels so real. Like it, you feel like you're at a game and you're like you want to cheer them on and I've never really had that with an anime before. It's fantastic. I did a call out post last year, I think. I was sort of like trying to put together a post of like anime like recommendations like from the community, just like um, what Kotaku readers think you should be watching. And I threw it up on Twitter and Mark Serrells, the former editor of this fine establishment, immediately reached out and was just like, fucking watch Haikyuu, love it. (laughs) Like he was so about it. I was talking to him. Yeah, I was talking to him um, recently and he was just like, he loves anime, but he loves Haikyuu. Like that man is the poster child for Haikyuu. And I think- He really is. Every time there is an advertisement, he it should just be him talking about the show. Serral's is really like doing that like copy pasta where it's like, if there's a thousand Haikyuu fans, I'm one of them. If there's one Haikyuu fan, it's me. There are none. I am dead. Like, <laughs> that's Serral's. I, and I, I love, love that, that for him. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, look, I, I feel it in my bones about a lot of different shows. I, like, I really love, like, the concept of Haikyuu. I've never gotten around to, like, getting super into it, but I think it's it's one of those ones that's, like, on the perpetual list of, like, when I run out of things to watch, I'm just one get, day going to turn to it and just binge it all. And I can't wait. It's- yeah, it's such an easy watch. Like, it's so easy to digest. Like, it's funny and it's heartfelt and, you know, it doesn't really tackle any super deep problems. So it's like, you know, if you're the kind of person that's wanting to get into anime but scared that it's, like, too dark or too, like, adult, like, this is a really good show because I know a lot of people are a bit um, – maybe they think, oh, it's really violent – or you know really sexual or whatever it is like high q is perfect i think as a first anime i think, I think another one that maybe i'm just biased because like this one is one of my favorites but i think um food wars is a fantastic like entry level one I think a lot, of, most of it is like super, super lighthearted, which helps. It also has the most delicious looking depictions of food ever. And I don't know, I just think it's like very, very hopeful vibes. It's really goofy at a lot of points. I think that they amp up the tension of cooking in a way that I don't think even like any reality cooking show has ever done. Obviously, it helps that they're doing like the most ridiculous, unrealistic things a lot of the time. Like, the whole concept of the school that they're at is just, like, so out of pocket. <laughs> but, but I don't know. I love Soma and I love all his little friends and everything that they cook is just so good. Um, and I I binged this one during 
2020 when I was just like sitting at home like only eating takeout because I couldn't go anywhere so it was very nice to watch like all these little cooking competitions and I remember they did like they had that whole this whole competition of like how to make like the best curry and I was like oh my gosh I'm like so so hungry now but I think it's I think it's a really good one to get into and like as much as it can get kind of convoluted if you take into account kind of the politics of the school I think the concept itself is very straightforward. The guy just wants to be the best chef and he loves his dad. Like, I don't know. So I, th- I think it can be, like, very, yeah, it's, like, a simple one to grasp. So I think it's a good entry-level one. And it's also, as much as it does have, like, a little bit to it as far as episodes, I still think it's not, like, overwhelmingly long. I yeah. remember someone once told me to watch One Piece as my first anime and I was like, Oh dear God! I don't listen to but... them. <laughs> Too much. Look, I have not seen all of One Piece. Like I've seen episodes here and there. I haven't seen it all. It's good. Like it's definitely oh, yeah. good. But who has the time when I'm watching like fifteen plus shows a season? I don't have time for One Piece. You know, like. Um, but I will say for shonen anime, if you're into more like fighting and you want to get into anime and you want like a boys punching cool guy anime, uh, I definitely recommend, um, My Hero Academia. Yes, um, I was going to say that. It's, yeah, it's, it. Start, it does a thing where it kind of grows with the audience. Uh, so it starts off quite light and, you know, we see the main character as, as a child and he wants to have superpowers and he doesn't. And, you know, as he gets him and it gets darker and darker. So you can enjoy a journey, I think. It definitely eases you into the heavier themes. It's not like some where it's 20 minutes into the first episode, you're like, oh, okay. I'm depressed now um and I think it's it's very it's just fantastic I think it does have really good like action scenes and I think kind of the hype of being like oh like is Deku gonna continue like growing in in in, like this power is he is he gonna crumble under it I don't know it's a very cool concept and I also loved like getting to meet all the other characters and getting to learn more about their powers and their backstories and I think I, I do I do think it's great to have an anime that explores like kind of the whole ensemble rather than just focusing on one person because then you get to have your and faves I, and learn a bit more about them. Yeah, and I think like the fact that it's so mainstream is really good because you can talk to people about it, right? Like I think something for anime fans that's really important is having the conversations about what you're watching, like about the media, and if you're watching something really niche, um, you know, that's great, but who are you going to talk to? about it like it's it's so fun to bond over like you know your favorite my hero academia character or how saitama in one punch man just punches a guy and they die like you know (laughs) it's fun (laughs) oh absolutely now david i know you've taken a bit of a sabbatical from watching lots and lots of anime but Mm. if you had to recommend something as an entry-level show what would your pick be Easiest answer in the world, Cowboy Bebop. Oh, yeah, of course. Do you care to elaborate? Sure. It is the best anime ever made, uh, at least in my opinion. Like, it's 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 the reason, like, I ultimately, like, stopped watching a lot of anime because that show blew the doors off me, like, creatively, <laughs> artistically, like, s- to the extent that I was just, like, I started watching other shows after it and I was just, like, this is not as good. This is not as good as what Cowboy Bebop was able to achieve in 26 episodes um, and a movie. Um, it's just, yeah, don't watch the Netflix show. It fucking sucked. That was not my Cowboy Bebop at all. They get, listen, they, they gave it their best. They did, they did what they could. It looked like some shit filmed at Movie World in 2001. Like mm. it was not, it was not good. John Cho, they did you dirty, man. Um, this is not my Cowboy yeah. Bebop. <laughs> it is not. It is yeah. not. Overusing uh, the music. God, God. Um, it, yeah, the Cowboy Bebop is as close as to, like, an anime becoming, like, a Western television show that I've ever seen. Like, it, you could – it was the sort of show that I could have played to my parents who did not 
understand my fascination with anime one bit. I could have played them Cowboy Bebop and they would have completely got that show. It's sort of like it dealt in such universal themes and ideas that they could have grasped it easily. That's why I think it's like a god tier, my first anime pick. And it was so, because it's so episodic too, like you can just mm. pick, kind of watch at any point and it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a fantastic one. I was, like, a bit late to the jump to actually watch it for the first time. And then when I started watching it, I was, like, shitting, pissing, screaming up the walls about how good it was kind of thing. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just very, very good. And I was, like, not expecting it because I was, like, ah, I feel like there's a lot of, like, older anime that I personally didn't feel like it's aged well. Like, a lot of them have, like, Akira being one. But, like... I don't know, there's also plenty where I'm like, oh, dear God. But I feel yeah. like Cowboy Bebop has kind of stood the test of time and I don't know, I think it's a credit to the studio. But I yep. definitely agree, don't watch the live action, it's garbage. It's, <laughs> it's so bad. It's so it's bad. Good. Like, oh. It's good seeing older anime being remade now, though, um, especially yeah. things that maybe – you know, if it didn't stand the test of time, a lot is being remade. So one that came out last year was Uruse Yatsura, which is the main character, Lum. She is the original waifu, um, Zero Two, based <laughs> off of Lum, literally. Like, really? Yeah. So Lum is the original waifu. Like, your granddad was watching this and having a great time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> it's Lum. So they remade that and it has they've done such a good job. It's hilarious. It's cute. I'm going to get a Lum tattoo. As soon as I get, wow. save up money, I'm getting a Lum tattoo because oh, chef's kiss. I, Fantastic. I've looked her up and I can see where she would be the original waifu. Bless her. Yep. It was always her. Still it was is. always her all along. <laughs> <laughs> Lum was in our hearts. Lum was in our hearts forever. Yeah. Another one that I think is like a really, really good, well, me personally, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of them are biased. I'm like, this is just my favourite anime. But there are also ones that I feel like I would comfortably recommend to someone who's not super into it. Um, Is Cyberpunk Edronis. I just feel like it kind of, it leans nicely into the, like, I guess, obviously the hype of like cyberpunk 2077 so you can kind of capture capture the gamers and people mm. that are maybe not so heavily like into anime yeah from an anime and, product that netflix kind of whiffed onto one they got dead right oh, yeah they just did i just was not expecting it to be as good as it was because obviously i'm a simp for cyberpunk things like neon light make my brain go brr but um <laughs> Yeah, the cure no, bike slide, changing my brain chemistry. Oh, absolutely, but yeah, no, it was it was just fantastic. Like I think the characterization of all of the characters was fantastic, which is why it literally broke my soul to watch it. I was just saying to David, I watched it over the weekend, and I was like, wow, that was a bad idea, but God, I loved it. <laughs> I'm so really it's, sad. Yeah. What a show! Yeah, like look, it's definitely not one to watch if you like want to have good, happy, wholesome, fun times because you you will not have that. But um, I think if you like a show that kind of like really gut punches you, it's it's got it all. And um, yeah, the music's yeah, so good. I I slept on it when it, the season it was airing. I slept on it because I'm I'm a bit burnt out on uh, future and high fantasy anime at the moment. Um, so I slept on it and when I saw like maybe a few months later when I saw it was like popping off I was like all right and I binged it in one day and I was on my couch sobbing I was sobbing my fiance is like what is happening and I'm like guy with a robot spine like (laughs) (laughs) legit also I'm not going to spoil anything, but the ending, I'm a sucker for that kind of ending. Like, I'm a sucker yes. when it all goes to shit. I love it. Like, mm. uh, every- like at the time, at the time when I'm watching it, I'm like, wow, screw the creators. This is the worst thing. This has broken my heart and my soul and my mind. And then I sit with it for a couple of days and I'm like, nah, but you, you were so right for that. 
Like, yeah. it, was, it was good. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's dark. I could, I, it's very dark. <laughs> Look, I could pop off about Cyberpunk Edge Runners forever and ever because I just think it's like peak, like, I don't even know. But I do think that for people that have struggled to get into anime, it is another one of those ones that does have kind of real universal themes. It's, it's, it's got a lot to it that I think that someone who's maybe not traditionally into like a typical anime, if you can even define a typical anime, will like. And I also just think that there's a lot to it visually and audio wise that are also really, really cool if you're more of an art or sound direction snob as well. So mm. I don't know. It tickles the brains of many, if you'd like to call yeah. it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like what? that's most of my recommendations for, like, new shows. Is there any more that either of you had? Oh, well, not new shows, but entry-level shows. I watched Chainsaw Man earlier this year. That was pretty mm. good. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Chainsaw I enjoyed Man. that one. Like, I I haven't watched, like, a lot of anime this year, but I did I did watch that one on Ruby's recommendation. She was just like, you got to fucking watch this shit. You're going to love it. Uh, and I did enjoy it. Um, it was, like, I had a little trouble following what they were where they were going at times. Like it seemed like that show just sort of like wants to zag on you and sometimes it doesn't really track where they're going and why. Um, but it seems like it's sort of like wrapped up in story threads. It's not quite ready to reveal yet a lot of that. Um, for what it was, yeah, definitely enjoyed it. I'm keen to see where that show goes in a second season, which I believe it's getting. Yeah, yes. me too. It's, um, it's from my favourite niche genre of anime, Two absolute fools move in with a ex- person who's extremely tired of their bullshit. My favourite. Yep. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, I I want to recommend also for new anime fans, Bocce the Rock. Um, so if you haven't heard of that, it's a music anime. Um, it's like K-On on steroids. Um, it's the most realistic depiction of music I have ever seen in anime. Um, The main character, she's so extremely socially awkward. Um, She wants to be in a band because she plays guitar, but she does not have the guts to approach anyone. So she starts a YouTube channel and she's really famous on YouTube as this amazing guitarist. Um, And then she kind of meets some girls and they help her kind of overcome that but it's the little moments in that, like the depictions of social anxiety or a panic attack or, you know, really good wholesome friendship or the bass player that's really cool but never says anything. That's what's good about it. I looked it up to get a vibe of the aesthetic and one of the first things that came up was a photo of the main character's face looking horrified and the title is just being (laughs) perceived and I think that gives me like a really good indication of where it's at. I'm really keen to watch yeah, that, actually. That's the show. It's it's so good. And the music is fantastic. It's not – like, I love K-On, but the music is like, rice is my favourite side dish. And I'm like, cool. But the music in this is actually very good. <laughs> that's good because, yeah, I definitely feel like – I definitely feel <laughs> like um, – sometimes yeah the music is not amazing it's like so one of my gateway animes was actually like love live because of course it was um and i feel like look some of the music in it great some of it (laughs) no i put up with it because i i I liked the show but um not all of it was that life-changing so it is it is nice to see that something like this has actually good music um speaking of gateway anime just mm-hmm. quickly, David, what was your first anime? Oh, jeez. Um, what massively got me into it was Evangelion, um, which was airing on SBS at the time. Um, they were airing it on like, I can't remember, it was like Friday or Saturday nights and they would do two episodes back to back and they did that. This was back when like Mad Men first got the ADV licenses when ADV was still uh, an anime production company before that all turned into Funimation and started dominating the world. Um, it, yeah, that was like, 
that felt like some kind of cultural moment. I was talking to um, Chris Neal, uh, who works with us uh, at Kotaku, about this sort of last week. Um, it was the kind of thing where, like, it felt like a lot of people were watching this show and it was all under the radar. Like people weren't talking about this insane animated show that was on SBS on Friday nights or whatever, but every now and again, someone would let slip that they've been, it was kind of like critical role fandom for a while. Someone would let slip that they've been watching it. And you were just like, Oh, you took, you've seen this fever dream of a fucking show as well. I'm not alone. Um, <laughs> you've seen the Shinji robot show. Um, that's, absolutely wild and that kind of kicked it off for me from there like i went all in after that um the local video shop at the time had like a ton of anime that the guy had just who owned it had just been sort of collating for himself it was just a bunch of show like manga entertainment movies and tv shows that were incredibly violent and full of blood and gore and sex that he'd just been collating for himself so we were like okay we're just gonna I know, what a rock star. We're just going to get, like, we're going to be exposed to shit like Yurotsuki Doji and, like, um, we we, we saw Ninja Scroll for the first time because we we got that from there. That was an R-rated movie and we were, like, 15 years old, took it up the counter and he's like, on your way, boys, enjoy. Um, David is a child, like, watching Elfin Lied by himself We got We got got scarred. (laughs) There was a lot of shit we were not ready to see that we we, we got from that video (laughs) shop. Um, at the time, SBS was having uh, cult movies on like Friday or Saturday night as well. That was hosted by a guy named Des Mangan. What a god! Um, he was he was the guy who would make sure that like once a month, like an anime movie went on TV in Australia. So he was like, "It's going to be Akira this month. It's going to be Ghost in the Shell next month. We're going to do uh, Ninja Scroll, but we're going to edit out the rape scene. We're going to make sure that that doesn't go out." He was very particular about how he put that together, how he collated that. I wish there was still something like that in Australian television. Um, unfortunately, king. no. We just get, I know, what a god. We, we just get served legend. algorithms now rather than somebody sort of hand-picking what they're going to put on TV for you. My favourite was when I think it was ABC3 hand-picked to play Vampire Night at a time when only children were watching, including me, and I was like, ah, this has changed my brain chemistry. Did you also have the same experience, Courtney? I did, but the funny thing is they would play that and then afterwards they would play Fruits Basket. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, hold up. You just other way around, guys. Other way around. <laughs> Very tonally different shows. Yeah. Tonal whiplash. <laughs> also, Courtney, I don't believe I asked, what was your gateway anime? Uh... So my gateway anime, when I knew I was watching anime, the first anime that I was like, this is a media form that I know I'm watching, uh, was Black Butler. I was really into Victorian Gothic English literature. I was obsessed. I literally... I wore this like thick black eyeliner and I was like, I am a child from Victoria, England. (laughs) I was such a nerd. And my friend was like, hey, you know, there's like an anime about that. Um, And I was like, no, show me. And then this handsome demon butler in a suit throwing butter knives stole my heart. Well, I mean, honestly, fair enough too. I don't, I don't blame you. Well, I think that's potentially all we have time for because I think if we continue talking about anime, we will be here for seven. I do have one question before we finish it up, though. Yes. And maybe, maybe you can help me with this, Professor Courtney. What the fuck is up with anime titles now? Oh, why, yes. are, why are there so, okay. like my life is a fucking slime and shit what is going on okay. so uh there is actually a reason uh in japan light novels are a huge thing um so a lot of people like manga is very popular and anime is very popular but light novels also and a lot of anime comes from light novels but for the light novels because there's so many it's so saturated what they need to do is make the titles really, really long so they get noticed um, and they kind of show up in, uh, like, search engines and things. So I was going to say, are they SEOing this shit? Because yeah. that's what it seems like. 
Yeah, so it's it's very they're quite long, and obviously it happened for so many years that now, like in the twenty twenties, what's happening is other creators are starting to take the piss. So it's kind of come full circle on itself, and now it's a big joke. Like reborn as a vending machine, like perfect. Yeah, just oh, I love them so much. Is it? As much as at the same time, I'm like, why are these so cursed? Like, I can't even think of one off the top of my head because they all become just like a clump together where it's like, I was reborn as a slime who could lift really, really heavy weights and my mum was there for some reason. Also, I'm really good at fighting God. Like, (laughs) I reckon that's definitely the name. (laughs) That's going to be the name of an upcoming anime. Just so you guys wait. I am the Oracle. Is it your anime? Yeah. Are you the main character? A hundred percent, yeah. I reckon that's gonna be mine. I'll um once I'm really ri- rich, I'll bankroll someone making it and then you never know, you might see it up on up on Crunchyroll one day, who knows? I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's gotta be like an anime title generator out there now that's just gonna feed you titles like that. I turned into a refrigerator that also like, you know, faced satan and walked backwards into fucking hell or whatever like i keep seeing these titles that make no goddamn sense and like these are the shows that my friends keep recommending and i'm like i'm not watching the vending machine show that sounds horrifying (laughs) have you seen reborn as a spider that's wild Uh, what the fuck no (laughs) it's a real show (laughs) i'm so burnt out why hi i'm so burnt out on fantasy get me out (laughs) <laughs> I'm in hell with all these fantasy shows. Oh. Courtney's trying to like walk out of League of Legends prison and she's walking straight into like high it's, fantasy fucked up. Yeah, it's Sideshow Bob prison. and the Rakes just like back yes, and forth. Back- <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my own God. I put myself there. <laughs> it's a choice. <laughs> she unlocks one jail, walks into another, and locks it behind her again. I'm doing it so you don't have to. <laughs> I'm doing this for you. This is actually a favorite. It's, it's I'm doing. like that that meme of like the really big guy and there's all like the arrows like hitting his back and the really tiny person. <laughs> That's it. Courtney's the real big guy. Yeah. Please, surely a listener 100%. can make this happen. <laughs> Look, oh my God. I'll, I'll make it happen once we finish the podcast and I'll send it to I'll you. Tell, Thank I you. will tell Ben Veras he will make it in about 10 seconds, the oh, fastest yeah. memer in the West. Yeah, <laughs> quick draw on that fish, that shit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <sighs> All right. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for chatting to us about anime and unhinged things today, Courtney. It's been a pleasure Thanks having, for having you. me. It was um, so much fun. You can find Courtney's oh. work on the website. She pops up very often freelancing for us. Uh, yeah, the unofficial uh, lead anime reporter on Kotaku Australia. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here, mate. Um, but yeah, that's our that's our show for this week. Hope you've all enjoyed hanging out with us as much as we've enjoyed hanging out with each other and saying cursed things. Um, we really appreciate you all listening, and uh, you can follow us on pretty much everywhere at Kotaku AU or Kotaku Australia. So that includes TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We got it all. Um, and if you'd like to follow us individually to see more of our hot lukewarm and cold takes on our personal social medias you can find me at sage fox with a zero and two x's where can they find you david they can find me not on twitter uh i am gone from there well i turn up every now and again and i just post like work links and then i check my dms (laughs) and i disappear um i'm over on the blue sky these days here and there uh if you can find me over there good luck um Otherwise, you can find me on just about every other social media platform at Room Words. That's R H U N W O R D S. Uh, I'm on pretty much everything. Come and find me. Say good day. And where can they find you, Courtney? Um, I spend most of my time nowadays on TikTok making anime recommendations at Courtney, K O U T O N I. If you add an extra I and you search me, you'll find me on Twitter as well. Very, very good. Well, yeah, hope everyone has a wonderful week. Make good choices. Watch some anime over the weekend. 
And we will be back next week to chat more things about games, pop culture, and whatever cool stuff's happening. So, yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Mata ne.